All right. So actually, because because of the day that I've had, so this is this is pretty, uh, you know, self-centered. But I want you to come and stand up, please, to begin with this afternoon. So we don't we don't often begin yin standing. But we are just going, so I don't know what sort of day you've had. And maybe you've been quite active today, or maybe you haven't. Maybe you've done a lot of sitting around. And none of, neither of those is right or wrong. But what we're going to do is just make sure that we are ready to practice. So I'd like you to stand with your feet just a little bit wider apart than your hips. Turn your toes out ever so slightly. Bend your knees a little bit and allow yourself to kind of sit into your pelvis as though you, as though you were going to sit on a chair that's behind you. But it's, it's a very subtle movement. There's, it's so that the pelvis can take the weight of your upper body. And then just like we did yesterday morning, just like we do on a Thursday morning, I want you to start to swing. Okay, so you're like, you're like a little helicopter. I want you to swing, but I don't want your arms to do the movement. I want it coming from your torso, coming from your spine, in fact. And you are, the arms are just a, you know, an, an event that, that, that is happening because of the movement. And the knees need to stay a little bit soft so that they can act like the shock absorbers. And try not to lean over to one side or the other. So keep the spine fairly upright and allow the head to move freely as well as though if you uh, maybe you don't have to go particularly fast here but just see if whether you get to the edge of one rotation and it's like it springs you back into the to the next one and just see if you can take your your gaze over your shoulder so it's almost as though you are kind of looking out the opposite way and when you do this, I want you to make sure that your jaw is really relaxed and that your gaze is really soft. So can you, can you kind of not look so hard? So if like me, you've been staring at a screen or writing lots of stuff down, maybe you've been working today, maybe you've had you know, things that you have been concentrating on. And I want you just to soften the eyes so that we can take a layer of that, that, that stiffness away from us. Now, as a, as a morning practice, this is wonderful. This is great to do because it gets the whole spine working and you can kind of feel it lifting your energy. And as it lifts your energy, it will lift your mood as well. You'll just start to feel better. So really think about, you know, if you don't, if you get out of bed and you're feeling a bit stiff and a bit achy, because that's really quite normal at this time. We're stuck indoors, we're stuck in this, this crazy situation and our bodies are, are really in a bit of flight or flight, aren't they? They're really, and what that does is it makes us quite achy, it makes us quite tired. So keep letting the ribcage turn, letting the arms just lightly pat you on the sides of your body if they get there. Don't force the arms to move any way that they, they're not already naturally doing. But if they do, the front arm will sort of just pat you on the side of the waist and the back arm will tap you just slightly towards the back of the kidneys maybe. But Again, don't force this, just see what naturally occurs and just keep letting the head be free. All right. And then begin to kind of slow it down, noticing your feet. So your feet feel quite firm, quite strong. There's no, there's no jolting, there's no sudden movements, but just slowing it down naturally until you come to a stop and Closing your eyes and feeling how good your feet feel against the ground. And maybe there's still a sense that you're still spinning, that the rotation is still going on. Maybe you've got a little bit of tingling happening in the fingers, or the hands or the arms. 
Now that you're still, can you invite some deeper breaths in and out? Is that able to, to happen because we've cleared some space in the thoracic part of the spine and then it's allowing the ribs and the rib cage to move more freely? Here's another fact about the lungs for you, that if you took the rib cage away and you inflate the lungs, they get bigger than the space of the rib cage. So remember that when your breathing gets shallowed, it, your lungs have the capacity to breathe into every bit of space that your ribs allow. But when we get a bit stressed out, when we get a bit tired, our breathing tends to get a little shallower, not because we're getting more efficient at our breathing, it's just that we place importance elsewhere. All right. So now let's open the eyes. Well done, everybody. Come down to sit, please. And we're coming into the first, first pose. Um, you could sit on a, a blanket or a block or a bolster, but I would suggest that you have a blanket um, and just in case you need it, I've folded mine up into kind of a long uh, rectangle just in case I need it. And we're going to come into um, sometimes called double pigeon, sometimes it's called shoelace, sometimes it's called square pose. We often do shoelace, I call shoelace this, okay, which you're very welcome to do if you want to. But the start position that I'm going to suggest for you is to sit cross-legged, okay? Now the target areas, so remember today's practice is about the target areas that the pose is looking to, to stress, and we mean stress in a positive way. There will be other areas that you will feel sensation into, and that's fine and that's okay, um, but the target areas for square and shoelace pose is the side of the, the hip, the, the glutes, and the IT band. So you might feel it in those places. And you could, so what I want you to do when you're sitting cross-legged is just walk your sit bones back slightly. So you're just creating more space to allow for a tilt forwards at the pelvis. And it might be that you come down and I've got my right leg in front of my left leg, by the way. And it might be that you come down to the floor quite easily and you've got a stress in the sides of the hips and the, uh, down the edges of the thighs. And that might be fine. That might be where it's at. Um, if you are here and you uh, need higher up, if you need a bolster underneath you, maybe you can rest your forearms onto it or even a chair, a seat of a chair is good. If you are not getting enough stress here, so um, I'm thinking more into the right hip because I've got my right hip in front, then the next option to make it a bit deeper is to bring the foot onto the top of the knee. Now, most of you will have done this. We've done this in the recordings and in the Zoom sessions. So you might find that that becomes a better, deeper stress. And I find I need my blanket maybe just to support my knee. However, because my knee is very high, it does go down eventually, but I don't ever force it down. If you are getting any pain on the inside of the knee, on either leg, then that's not okay, all right? You must come out of the pose and make it a little bit easier for yourself. But the same thing is happening. You are coming forwards, all right? So you either sitting in a simple cross-legged position, right leg in front of left leg and folding forwards, or you have got right leg on top of left leg. I'm hoping you can see it. If I sit to one side, you might be able to see it a little bit more. Walk the sit bones back a little bit and then folding forwards just to your own measure, keeping the sit bones on the ground, supporting underneath knees or ankles if you need it. And as long as you're getting the, tar the target area stress, you might find that folding forwards creates stress into the back of the, the body, which is fine. It's like an extra bonus area, as long as you can breathe, okay? And we're going to stay here 
for three minutes. I'm going to put my timer on today because I don't want you to stay here longer than that. Now I know that we have been in the pose for a little while already, so I will just put the um, the uh, timer on for two minutes now to take into account that we've already been here for a little while. All right. So you could come into a shoelace, which is wrapping the knees all the way around to the sides. I know that some of you will like that, some of you enjoy that. It's just a different variation, really, on this same thing. Just breathe now. So as long as you've got uh, the stress in the target areas, it's not on the inside of the knees, and you are able to breathe here. Now the breath should be soft. And I want you to go back to the eyes again. Have you got your eyes open or closed? And if they're open, can you make sure that the gaze is really soft? And if even if the eyes are closed, and I know the head might be forwards, but maybe you can kind of move the eyes into the back of the sockets, as um, sometimes I suggest for you to do when we're in Shavasana. All right, keep breathing. We're going to maybe just move the back of the throat further back. So there is, there isn't this kind of jutting the chin out. Right, just going to stay for a couple more breaths. Really well done. Okay, so start to think about coming up and coming out of the pose. Just lifting yourself up gently, holding, cradling knee and ankle if you need to, and maybe just stretching the legs away briefly from you. We're not going to take a proper rebound just yet because we're going to do the pose on the other side. So we'll do the rebound bit in a minute and I, because I want to talk to you about that in a bit more detail when we get there. And so once you've had a chance, maybe just to stretch the legs and move the ankles, Remember that no two sides, <laughs> not your sides of the body are not the same. So the pose might feel different on the other side or you might need to do it differently. So remember, it's left. if you did right foot in front of left uh, previously, then it's uh, left in front of right. And just walk the sit bones back again. So you initiate this tilt of the pelvis and just see if you can fold yourself downwards towards the ground. So don't force that down. And certainly don't worry about how low you do come down. If you're not getting enough of a stress, and obviously the stress levels that you can cope with are determined by can you breathe easily, or is there uh, pins and needles or like severe discomfort? Because if that's the case, then that's not okay. We're not here to put the body under too much in, into pain, into a place of pain, because we're trying to take away a level of, of, dis, uh, of tightness and of, of stress and stress in a, in a you know, not so positive way. This is stress in a good way because when we stimulate tissues, when we stimulate areas of the body, it helps to delay, if you like, degeneration of these areas. Your body starts to, to to age because it's not being used so much. And there's loads of things that we can talk about in relation to that. Um, but now I just want you to go back into the breath space, go back into being soft behind the eyes. And if it helps you to kind of stay with the pose and not have a battle with it, not resist it. This is a big pose. This is deep for the first pose. And maybe the, the outer hip, the IT band, maybe this area, the outer thigh is tight for you. And when it should be, 
Okay, lots of you will have heard me talk about how strong the IT band itself is, and it's meant to be. And it's strong enough to pull a four-door car. If it's been taken, if it when it's been taken off of the body, dissected off of the body, it is that strong. Okay, it's strong enough. It doesn't snap to pull a whole car. And so then we come to things like, you know, why are we stressing it? Why are we stretching it? And we we remember this is this is a connective tissue practice as opposed to a muscular practice. And when we stimulate the connective tissue, we help to make it a balance of being very strong, but also having a little bit of stretch within it, a little bit of movement that allows for more freedom. Okay, so it's all about the balance within the body. You're doing brilliantly. Just one more minute here now. Stick with the breath. Keep breathing into maybe the, the outer hip. And if you get into these poses and they're all right to begin with, but then they quickly become not all right, then I want you to come out. Okay, I would want you to adjust them. So you might find that things that felt okay for the first minute might not feel okay after minute number two. And it might just mean that you need less time in the pose or that perhaps you came into something a little bit too deep. Your body just needs more time before it's ready to get there. It might just be the day of the week it is. I know for a fact some days my body really likes folding forwards and other days there's just no room at all, no, no movement. Well done. Okay, so let's gently inhale and slowly release yourself to come up and unwind the legs, stretch the legs out, do any movement that you need to to make sure that you are comfortable and then when you are ready, lay yourself down. And lay yourself down. We're going to stay here for about a minute. So turn your palms up towards the ceiling. Let your fingers curl. And then take your attention to those target areas. So that's the outer hip, the outer thigh. And I'd like you to feel what's going on. You might find that you're feeling heat. You might find that you can feel or sense energy and that energy or that heat is, is gently moving its way from the target area into different parts of your body. And so this is the rebound, this is the chance for you to really enjoy the effects of your practice and get into the sensory awareness, because that's something we talked about an awful lot, is being aware of how our body feels when we do things, and can we keep listening to its, its only method of communicating with us is through sensation. And often we listen really carefully to when those sensations are, are, are tough. If it's a pain or an ache, we, we can listen to that. We notice it. But do we also notice the good stuff too? And that's what can happen in these rebounds. They're so delicious. We get that opportunity to enjoy the spaces or the new sensation within the, the, the area of the body that we've worked. So then when you're ready, bend your knees and gently roll over to one side and you can come all the way up to sit. Ah. <laughs> so, very nice. Well done, everyone. Everyone okay? I noticed, um, you all, are you all right, Joe? Just give me a thumbs up because I saw you sitting differently and is your, are your knees okay? Can you hear me, Joe? Yeah, you. 
<laughs> Give me a thumbs up. Are, are your knees okay? No. Right. All right. I'll talk to you in a minute. <laughs> the next one then will be will be okay for knees. All right. And you, in fact, actually. Yeah, we'll do it this way because it, it, it lends itself to, to this. So we're going to work the back of the legs this time, okay? So the hamstrings. Is that all right with everybody? And I've just been, right, the, 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 the course that I've been doing today has been talking about not using the hamstrings a awful lot and um, trying to avoid the word stretch. How interesting is that? So we could come into a nice kind of caterpillar position, which is legs straight and you're folding forwards over the front of your legs. So you could, and I quite like doing this, I like using this, this rectangular uh, blanket and just wedging it into the front of the hips to give something to kind of rest upon. And that can be quite nice. You might want to put something underneath the knees if your knees are troublesome, okay? Um, you can pull yourself downwards towards your uh, feet. You can hold on to your feet if you want to. But you're just, and I don't mind what happens with the, with the back of the body. Um, I want your head to fall forwards. But if you want to use your hands to support your head, then for your, for, by all means, you're very welcome to. But as long as you're getting a stress down the back of the legs, and that's the key here. Now, if not a lot is happening, then you can play around with what pose or how to deepen that to your own measure. It might be that you need to sit on something to tilt the pelvis more easily. So if you're getting it aching in your lower back, then my advice would be to sit up higher on stuff so that you can tilt more easily forwards. Um, but if it is the case that you are really aching your lower back because there's very little tilt, very little movement in the pelvis and you're finding that you're hunching and it's making the lower back ache, then stay more upright and just tilt but so that you're keeping your heart higher and you might find that you get a better stretch for the back of the legs that way, all right? Some of you have got bolsters, you could roll over the bolster, you could put the bolster on the, the thighs and hang over the front of it that way. Some of you might be really uh, capable of coming all the way down and you don't need to force yourself down but just letting yourself come closer towards the front of the neck. And there is a little bit of a journey that goes on with this, okay, so don't be surprised if you get all those feelings of you know, I'm not, I'm not going into this deep enough, or I wish I could get my nose on my shins, or, you know, those kind of ego messages. I want you to let them, let, let them disappear, okay? Get rid of them. Don't allow those in, right? Just be present with where you're at. At this moment in time, and we're not striving to be somewhere else. And we're not looking to take away anything from this moment that we're in. Similar to the Asteya theme that we had in the previous practice. Being content. And if you're feeling a nice big long stretch into the hamstrings, enjoy this. Enjoy this length. Breathe into that space. You might even get a bit of a sensation into the calf muscles. And for this final minute of the pose, not even a minute, I'll just leave you to your own breath. A couple more breaths here and then we'll come up. Nice 
all right. So let's take an inhalation. Let's lift ourselves up. And maybe just take the hands to the floor behind. Squeeze the shoulder blades towards one another. Lift the chest. Really nice. And then take another lie down. Making sure that you feel comfortable. Letting the legs relax. And taking your attention just for a few breaths into the back of the thighs. Do they feel different? Do they feel warm? What does the length of the legs feel like? How does the lower back feel? So let's bend the knees and let's roll to one side and come up to sit. Lovely stuff. Okay, so a little bit of a half butterfly. So I want you to bend your right knee in towards your chest and then let the knee roll out to the side. Left leg is straight down away from you. And we're going to have a, another uh, target area of the back of the thigh again, but also this time maybe across the back of the hips. And we might also feel sensation into the side body if you need to. So if this right knee, when it comes out to the side, if it's, if it's very high away from the floor and you feel it needs some support, just wedge something underneath the knee there to help it feel more comfortable. And if you're going to find it tricky to reach for your foot, then please use, it, use a strap or something similar to enable your arms to reach down there, okay? So what I want you to do again is, get, is, is grab a handful of your bottom, please, and just gently take the left sit bone back slightly. And you can do the same with the right, but there will already be a degree of that happening because of the movement of the knee. Then you're turning just ever so slightly to face the left knee. And if it works for you, I want you to take your right hand to the outside edge of the left foot. Now, this isn't going to be available to everybody. So you can instead just hold the outside of the shin, the calf muscle, whatever you can reach. Sometimes it's kind of nice to tuck your fingers underneath the leg. And I want you to feel that you've got a little bit of a stretch happening down this right hand side of the body. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether, if you can reach the foot, it's kind of nice to hold on to the outside edge of the foot. You're going to get this stretch down the back of the left leg, but also you're going to get a stretch down maybe the, out, maybe the back of the right shoulder blade, side of the rib cage, side of the waist, and maybe into the back of the hip. What you do with the left arm is up to you. Some people like to cross the left hand over the top of the right and also hold on to the foot. Some people just leave it on the floor, it's up to you. Okay, so as long as you've got this, that sort of stretchy feel in those target areas, so, and I, I think it's quite nice here to use the breath to breathe into the right hand side of the torso. And believe it or not, you have more lung in your back or on the back side of your body than you do on the front. So it's quite nice. So people that are that are recovering from COVID, people that are recovering from pneumonia, the doctors are placing them on their fronts in hospital because it's much easier to get the breath into the lungs when you're on your front. And, I, and feel free to have a little bit of a play with this. But it's it when you're when your breathing is compromised. It's, it's quite good to be on your front to breathe. So yeah, and this is, this is something that is, um, needs to be shared, I reckon, with, um, with, with people who are recovering from this. 
this horrible illness. Because apparently what isn't happening is that there isn't, there just isn't the, um, there isn't the staffing available for the aftercare and lots of people being sent home from hospital and um, and they're just not getting, there's, there's, there's no there's no physios, there's no people that are doing the, the follow-up. So, um, so yeah, so, so breathing and, and movements like this are, could be really quite helpful. Okay, so just a few more breaths here, you're doing brilliantly. And let's think about gently coming up and releasing and taking the knee up, stretching the leg out. Just maybe giving the legs a little wobble around while we make sure they both feel as long as each other again. Good. And then let's do the other side. So let's bring the left knee in. Take the knee out wide, support the knee if it, if it needs support, it might not do on this side. Take a handful of your right bottom and just take, just gently take the flesh of the bottom back so you feel that there's this extra length in space and then all the way down the right leg. And then remember the target area moves to the left hand side of the torso, back of the shoulder blade. Obviously it's the back of the right leg. And you might feel it across the back of the hips here. If you can, you're holding on to the outside edge of the right foot with the left hand. And then this right arm can just rest down or you can cross it over the top. Or you're tucking your hand maybe underneath the, the calf or something like that. So it just encourages the length along the left hand side. Use a strap if you need to. And make sure that whatever pose, whatever variation of the pose you come into, it's one that is appropriate for you, okay? So if you're here having a bit of a fight with your own body, then that's not gonna, that's not gonna induce this yin state, is it? And there in, within the yin practice has to be an element of passive, passivity, okay? As we, as we surrender, as we let go, as we allow. That's the, that's the yin place, that's the yin state of being. about halfway down, deep breathing. And last breath. 
and then on the inhalation perhaps you'd like to release and gently unwind yourself just slowly because all of this coming out is all part of the rebound it's part of the release and um, extend the left leg away from you move any props out of the way so that you can lay yourself down again and we're going to go back to these little mini mini shavasanas so that you can get into that sense awareness of your body what do you notice? Maybe about the right leg, maybe about the left. What do you notice about the left side of the body? Can you feel the heat there? One of the longest lines of connective tissue is from one foot towards the opposite hand. So if you think about that, if you think about that diagonal line along your body, that's what you have just been stretching into. Let's again bend the knees and make your way back up to sit again. Good. Okay. So we so we've worked the back of the thighs, we've worked the outer thighs. So now we're going to work the inner thighs. And so you can kind of see what's coming. So eventually we will be working the fronts of the thighs as well. Um, so the, the classic uh, pose for working the inner thighs is, is um, a straddle pose where you take the legs out super wide apart. Now, how does everybody feel with this? Because obviously this is, Jo's just gone into this because she's like, yeah, this is, I like doing this one. <laughs> but, um, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, my suggestion is to sit on something, sit on blocks or a, or a blanket. And again, to allow or initiate a tilt from the pelvis, okay? It's not, I don't mind about the rounding of the back and the shoulders and everything, which we wouldn't normally allow in a normal uh, yang practice. We would keep the body nice and spacious and not cramp the tummy. But with yin, we do allow for some softness there because that's all part of the, of the yin aspect. But the movement comes from the tilt of the pelvis. And it might be that today you can come down. You might want to put some cushions underneath your elbows or use your bolster to prop um, at an angle to support the front of your head. It might be that you really enjoy this and you want to reach really far forwards and get even longer. So if that's the case for you, that's fine. Whatever variation, however you want to change this pose up, as long as you've got sensation or stretch or length occurring in the inner part of the thighs and the groin, then that's where we're going with this, okay? It, you need to be able to breathe and the pose, the, 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 the sensation of the pose mustn't be so intense that that's, that's you know, it's, it's becoming a detriment to the pose itself. All right, so if you can't kind of take yourself into a softer place or into a breath space where the breath is even and it's consistent, so it, it sounds the same as you breathe in, there's a continuity through the length of your breath. And as you breathe out, that same continuity continues. There isn't a rush. You haven't rushed your way through any of any part of the breath. And if you can, you will encourage a slight pause 
on the end maybe of the exhale and even in between the inhale and the exhale. So the key always is never to force, just to allow. And the more you allow, the more you may notice that your body yields, it softens, and you find that there is more movement, the more range. But you haven't forced this to happen, it's just coming because you're allowing it to. All right, so let's think about slowly coming back up. Ah, and just gently maybe rubbing the inner thighs. And then we're going to come down to lie for the rebound. And we're going to stay lying down for the next pose. So if you want to jump on, if you haven't already got one, or if you need a blanket, to keep yourself warm and have it nearby. But then bring yourself to lie down and enjoy that rebound sensation. What, what happens or what is happening in the inner thighs and the front of the pelvis? All right, so let's, <coughs> excuse me, let's bend the knees and bring the knees towards your chest. Have a little hug in with the knees and maybe a rock from side to side. So we're going to come into a lying twist and we're going to think about the target area being the spine, the, 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 the spaces of the spine. Um, you're going to maybe have some sensation in the hips or the outer thighs and that's okay too. And it's your choice as to how deep you come into this. So you could come into it with the feet starting off on the ground and you just simply rocking both knees over to one side. Maybe the arms come out and you turn your head, 
maybe in the opposite direction or you can have your head facing the ceiling. If you want to go for a little bit of a deeper twist, and remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side too. So bear that in mind. And you could pick your feet up off of the floor, bringing the knees a little bit closer towards the abdomen and then rolling over into a twist that way. So you've got your knees more in line with the tummy button or the heart. And you can use your hand to wave the top knee down a little bit. And you can open your arm out to the side, however um, deeply you want it to be, or it can rest your palm can rest on the top rib cage, the side of the rib cage, just to encourage a sort of movement from the top knee to the rib cage or the shoulder as you try and open up that length along the side of the body. Um, a final option, because we're going to go to the right, so that would be to cross the left leg over the top of the right <coughs> and then come into a deeper twist and use your hand again that way. So you, you've got more of a stretch into the outer hip, into the glutes, on the back of the thigh. Um, but again, it's all, it's all about your preference. As long as you're lying in a twist and you have um, a decent amount of stress going through, you've got a nice rotation occurring for the spine, then enjoy whatever place you've elected to come into. Because remember, we're... Whilst we're putting stresses through particular areas of the body, we are not looking to stress the temp temperament. So we want to keep our, our movements soft enough so that we can feel that they're doing us the right amount of benefit or offering us the right amount of benefit. We don't want to be going into it so deep that it's going to make us feel more anxious or more annoyed or frustrated because what's the point in that? We are looking to put these stresses through the different areas of our body um, so that it creates the release during the rebound and that our body then can become a a softer and more harmonious place for us to be in. And so if you've had a, a day or even a week of, you know, stress or overwork or anxiety, then let this practice be the antidote to that. Allow your breath to find its way into the different areas of your body that need it. So one more minute here. And make this your last breath. And on your next inhalation, unraveling yourself back to a central point. And we won't come completely um, into rebound, maybe just rock the knees from side to side again so that the, the back feels comfortable. And then when you're ready, you're going to repeat your chosen pose, um, coming into it on the other side. So easing the knees across, maybe using the hand to weigh the knees down, maybe putting things underneath the knees or in between the knees if that helps. Choosing where you want your, your gaze to go, your head to go, or closing your eyes and allowing your breath to be nice and soft. See if while you're here, 
whether you can breathe into as much of the lung space on the back of your body as on the front. Okay, one more minute. Perhaps the quality in the pose has changed quite dramatically from what it was when you first arrived here. Enjoy that transformation. Okay, so last breath. And then when you're ready, you can return back to the center of the mat. Maybe have a little hug in of the knees if you need to. And then you can slide your feet away from you. Letting the toes roll out, the arms rest out by your sides, turn your palms up and let the breath be soft. Notice whether your spine feels any different. Perhaps there's a sense of freedom or of space. Perhaps it feels heavier, closer to the ground. I'd like you to bend your knees <coughs> and roll to one side so that you can come round and up to sit. Okay, so we are coming into the sort of penultimate pose. So we're going to take saddle because that is one of the best ways to stretch out the front of the thighs, the quadriceps and the psoas. The iliacus. Um, I, I, understand, I know that a lot of you won't want to be on your knees or have your knees this deeply bent. So the option, if, that is, if this isn't um, a great pose for you, is if I'll talk you through different variations of this pose, but if you know that your knees are not going to allow you to stay here, even with maybe a blanket kind of wedged into the back of the knee joint that's quite a nice thing to do um, it stops the knees from the joint from being so collapsed um, but the option is to and loads of you will know this is to come onto your front and to take sphinx or seal so just so just in case you're not familiar with that um, seal sphinx pose is forearms 
there isn't going to be much um, stress here into the front of the thighs, so better to be up into, into seal rather than sphinx. You're going to get the movement into a bit more into the target area. You could also lay on your front and just pull your heels in towards your bottom. That's too yang-like for a yin class, really, but you're going to get the, the stress into those areas. So there are your couple of options to play around with if you are not um, coming into a saddle. Um, saddle pose, I, I like to put the bolster behind me. You can use a couple of thick cushions or you don't have to have anything at all. You can just lie down or come down into the pose, but not completely flat if you don't want to. To come into this pose, um, I've got my knees apart, okay? So make sure your knees apart, but my big toes are together and I'm sitting on my heels. You could sit on a blanket or a cushion if that helps you. You can then lean back into the hands and I always point the tailbone in between the knees. Just lift the pelvis up a little bit and change the angle so you're really tilting the pelvis, tucking the tailbone almost underneath you. And that will put some space in your lower back. And it might be that coming back into this, if, you want, if you're familiar with this pose and you want to come straight down into it, go for it. But um, if you're here and you're thinking, yeah, I can feel that in my quads, then stay here. That's fine. You don't have to come any deeper as long as you've got the target area being met. Um, you could lay down onto your elbows, so some of you might be able to go that deep. I've got the bolster underneath me, but you don't need to have anything there. You can just be propped up on your elbows. Or if you can come all of the way down, and um, ideally you need something underneath your head as well here, maybe if you're propped up. It's quite nice to have the head just slightly elevated. Don't worry if the knees lift off of the floor. Um, please don't think about forcing them down or pushing them down towards the ground as the as the body opens up that will get that will get easier i'm just going to put the timer on okay so if you come into this pose it might be that your body is only comfortable staying here for two minutes instead of the three so you take you be your own best judge and if you need to come out of this pose or even out of sphinx or seal pose come into child's pose to rest okay and we're just going to take it really easy here maybe close the eyes this is the first kind of opportunity really to let the eyes fall away from the eyelids and into the back of your skull think too as well about letting the throat be nice and soft and moving the back of the throat further back. And if you are familiar with Ujjayi breath, take that now and let the sound of that breath be really quite soothing and comforting. One more minute left here.
last couple of breaths. Right, so if you are in Sphinx or Seal, come down to lie on your front. Those of you that are in um, saddle, lift yourself gently up. Bring yourself gently forwards. Just move out of the way. Any, any props, anything that's on your mat, you slide it out of the way so that then you too can come to lay down on your front. So everybody, you can do any movements that you need to before we get here. If you need to come into cat or cow, uh, to ease your spine, please do. But if you are happy here, I, I don't mind you raking a pillow for your head to rest on. Or um, if you remember, we did pentacle pose, so take your feet a little bit wider apart, maybe to the corners of your mat at least. And you could take your arms wide into sort of V shape and let your head rest on the floor. And then again, let your body unwind itself, let the, let the target area release its, its warmth, its energy, let that move its way into the different areas of your body. And then think about breathing into your back. Really allow the breath to fill up the back of the lungs. Think about the shoulders lifting slightly as you breathe in. See if you can get your breath all the way down to your kidneys. And then I'd like you to just gently support yourself, use your hands to lift you up and bring you up, um, maybe coming up to all fours and just rounding the back body into a cat stretch. Then I'd like you to come and sit, please. And we're just going to do um, a couple of minutes of breathing before we come into a proper shavasana. So grab whatever you need for your sit sitting practice, whatever makes you comfortable, sitting on a bolster or maybe having, um, if I'm gonna sit for a long time, I often put something underneath, the, like just sort of the, the blanket kind of nestled underneath the knees. We're only gonna be here for a couple of minutes though. So if you, even if you wanna sit on a chair, that's fine. So if, you, if you've got a chair close by and that makes it more comfortable for you. And just have your hands resting wherever you wish them to rest. And maybe closing the eyes. I'm thinking about the sit bones. And just like when we were standing at the beginning, we, we bent the knees and we just let the, the weight of the torso drop into the pelvis. I want you to allow that to happen now without slumping, without kind of losing the, the length or the shape of the curves of the spine. Just thinking about your body weight sinking into the support and how that support then offers you a rebound in and of itself. So you, you give in to gravity and then it's almost as though gravity is pushing you away as well. Let your breath come in and out. Through the nose, if possible. Mm 
Now, on our during our last uh, yin class, the previous one, when we were practicing reclining mermaid, we did a four part breath. If you remember, viloma pranayama. Viloma means interrupted. And the interrupted inhalation is very good for making your spirits lift. Um, an interrupted exhalation is very good for calming. And so that's what we're going to explore today. So it's the opposite of what we did last time. We are going to think about pausing the exhalation on three occasions. Okay, so there's going to be it will it will, what it will mean is that there's a uh, there's there's actually five pauses to the breath. So you're going to take just a nice long, gentle inhalation in. Then take the first pause. Now breathe out a little bit and pause again. Breathe out some more and pause again. Breathe out some more and pause and then breathe out the rest and pause. So there's a pause at the very end of the exhalation as well as at the very start and then three pauses in between along that journey. If three feels too many or you're rushing and you've lost your breath, don't worry. But your intention is to make this as easy as possible. So there has to be a sense that your breathing is still natural and that you are able to do this relatively comfortably, relatively easily. So I want you to go again. You're going to keep going. You're going to do this at your own pace. Okay, we're going to do it for just a couple of minutes. So I'll put my timer on again. And allow your eyes to close and your, your facial muscles, your jaw to relax. Your throat to move backwards slightly. And the shoulder blades to slip down the back of the body too. And just keep going now, breathing in. And then a staggered exhalation. Make this round of breath your last of Viloma Pranayama. And return the breathing to normal. And then when you're ready, bring yourself to lie down into asana. <clears throat> getting yourself comfortably warm and settled using whatever props you need to so that you can be comfortable.
If you'd like to cover the eyes with maybe an eye pillow or similar, maybe the arm of a jumper or something that a, a yoga strap is a good cover for the eyes as well. And just settle yourself down. So that you can be comfortably warm, making sure perhaps that the, the feet, the heels are a little bit wider apart than the hips, and that the hands can be out by the sides, but make sure that the palms face the ceiling to allow the fingers to curl softly. Starting from the tailbone and the sacrum area of your lower back, allow the tailbone to lengthen slightly away and feel the sacrum softly sinking into the mat, becoming a little bit heavier. Start to release the lumbar spine allowing the curve of the lower back to also soften towards the floor. Think about the area of your spine where your kidneys are housed and let them too sink towards the mat. Release the back of the rib cage, including the lowest floating ribs. Feel the back, the middle back sink into the floor. Feel the area where your bra strap usually sits. Let that release. Allow the shoulder blades to lie flat, supporting the upper back. Allowing the upper part of the thoracic spine to also rest a little bit more heavily. The curve in the back of the neck will remain. But maybe you could move your chin a tiny bit closer towards your heart. And then think about letting the back of your throat move closer towards the floor. Allow the head to rest heavily. Part the jaw, keep some space between the back teeth and let the tongue float inside your mouth. Feel your cheekbones releasing. Smooth the skin across your forehead. Allow your eyelids to remain gently closed and the eyes to sink into the back of their socket. Notice this, the expression on your face is melting. And as your skin relaxes on your face, allow this relaxation to 
to expand its way throughout the rest of your body. Your skin relaxing everywhere. So bringing some awareness back into your being, into your body. Breathing in and out a little bit more deeply as you prepare yourself to begin to move. Become aware of your fingers and toes and start to move them and maybe turn your head from side to side gently. Take a stretch out any way that feels good. And then I'd like you to Maybe just calm and roll over onto one side and slowly make your way round and up. And we'll finish with a little sit together just for a moment. Welcome back everyone. <laughs> okay. So sitting comfortably, any way that works best for you is fine. Taking your fingertips out by your side, breathing in and bringing your hands up above your head and breathing out, bringing your hands down and resting them in front of your heart. Relax your shoulders and maybe close your eyes again. Make sure the jaw is soft. Breathing in and out gently. Now as you sit here and bring your practice to a close, 
always a useful reminder to, to remember to be grateful for what we have and where we're at. So whilst you sit here, I want you to think about three things that you feel grateful for for today. Now, if you struggle to think of three things, the day is not yet over. Why well, I want you to return to this thought when you go to bed tonight. I want you to end your day in a, a feeling of gratitude. Once you've thought of your three things that have, are making you feel grateful today, I want you to think of three things that have made you smile today. Again, the day is not yet done. There is still time to find something funny. And then finally, and this one might be a little bit more challenging, I'd like you to think of three things that you feel grateful for so far this year. What three things have you learned from this year so far? And it's these lessons, this learning that carries us forward, that helps us to develop and grow. So three things you feel grateful for for today, three things that you have to smile about, and three things that you have learned from this year. Maybe you'd like to write them down once the class is over. Okay, let's take a breath in, open the eyes. Very well done. Now I'll say to you all, and thank you for coming to practice with me this afternoon. Well done.